<laughs> okay, new, new uh, video diary adventure. We are at CAT, C-A-T, the Centre for Alternative Technology, for a bit of uh, half, uh, I was going to say half term, uh, summer holiday education about all the different ways we could help our future by weaning us off fossil fuels and living on what nature provides us. So we've been um, sort of adventuring along this area here. And we're going to see what else Cat has in store for us. So we've walked up through the grounds of Cat, just gone to the cafe, which serves, as you can imagine, very, very high quality, good, good food, uh, all vegetarian cafe. Uh, just love all the buildings dotted throughout the grounds in between the trees. A lot of it feels like rainforest or like something out of Jurassic Park. And just outside the cafe is the outdoor playground, which looks like good fun. Some good obstacles to climb over. Arthur's over there making friends. This place does also feel a bit like somewhere you could imagine you'd want to be in an apocalypse. You basically get a sort of mini funicular railway up from reception. Um, it, so it feels quite secretive. I think we're in an old disused quarry, but it is a stunning place to be. It really is. You can see a sort of mountains wrapping around the side of us in Snowdonia. So uh, yeah, playground for a little bit, and then we'll keep adventuring. So we've got this really cool interactive. TV. Arthur, go, go back to the start. So we're looking at uh, European Space Agency data. Um, sort of monitor climate change. Which one did you press there? You've got all those options. Do you want to see something shocking? So this is greenhouse gases we're looking at. And then the important bit is looking at the left. Safe, safe is 350. We're currently at 414. There you go. That's really scary, isn't it? Yeah, just a short time ago, isn't it? Yeah, not very long, is it? It's all possible to fix it, though, if everybody wants to. This um, area is pretty cool. This is a uh, living Wales area. So yes, there's a good indoor bit of cat. So where, where are we going to now? We're on, our, on the way to the buildings workshop. This is a bit about do solar electric panels work on cloudy days? Well, the good thing is the very latest ones do. It doesn't need to, need to be sunny. Photovoltaic panels use light from the sun to make electricity. They work in daylight, whatever the weather. Even on cloudy or rainy days, power is produced from whatever light is available. Very cool. The gardens here are so abundant and rich. Look at the amount of hoverflies and other pollinators flying around the flowers. That's so cool. It really is a beautiful place to be. Wow, all the solar panels on the roof of that building. There we go, quick map stop. So we are there. We head into the training barns. Let's build. We were at the playground over here. Before that, we were at the cafe, and we basically came in up the really cool cliff railway and walked around over the bridge. So that's kind of what we're going to get up to next. So yeah, this is where you do some practical activities. Buildings workshop, woodworking, all that sort of stuff. That's an amazing material there. I think, I forget what it's called. 
but um, they use horse manure and mud and straw to make an incredibly sustainable wall of buildings. Watch the Grand Designs episode where they built this huge impressive house all using that technique. There's definitely some good things to do for children. Here's a pretty epic slide. Is Arthur going to go down it? Is he brave enough? Oh, the giant worm slide. <laughs> nice. And then it's all done in keeping with nature, so there's good, like, um, bug hotels and bird boxes. This bit talking about star moss and lichen. Lichen is just incredible fungus, I think, that eats away gradually at rocks. Then it rains. And then what it's eaten away at is all nutrients unlocked from the rocks, gets washed down mountains and into seas and feeds phytoplankton that produces the oxygen we breathe. Very cool. You go go back along. Yeah, this. No, I love this bit. So we've got this timeline on the blade of a wind turbine. So we're at today. We know about that. FYI, this is an actual wind turbine. This is yeah. So you go back to roughly 2000. World population six billion. So the year 2000, six billion. We go down the timeline. 1930 was 2 billion. 1830 was 1 billion. So from 1830 to 2000, the massive growth in the population of the planet. 1712 was 600 million. 1200 AD was 300 million. Down to 100,000 years ago was just 10,000 people. Crazy. Okay, so th this is a good one for teaching uh, about. I thought I kind of got this is to do with um, your waste. Where does your waste and recycling go? It's like you get like points, and I was about to get that one the first time. Big the, bonus. Well, the, the biggest big, bonus. The ball went like that. Nice. And came out. Biggest bonus is reduce your total waste by 50%. So you've got then details about composting huh? and uh, uh, mechanical biological treatment versus landfill with gas recovery or landfill with no gas recovery. Oh, apart yeah, from that, it's it. fun. You've got quite a cool sort of semi-outdoor area here, just about different um, means of energy. And also so something that's super, super, super important is talking about retrofitting. So basically making our current buildings more energy efficient which I'm pretty sure the stats are like we have some of the worst in Europe. So this feels like quick wins and you've seen campaigns, um, I think they're like insulation campaigns. For me it seems like a quick win for the government to provide grants to do a lot more of this. I think the amount of uh, roof space of all the houses in Britain with the issues around the war with Russia and Ukraine and the cost of gas it seems sensible that we wean ourselves off the need to import energy yeah I'm over here so Arthur's on a mission to, for the pinball machine What is it? So you've got landfill, recycling, compost, or controlled waste. Oh, you load it, you load it. No. Oh. <laughs> Not sure what that does, to be honest. What is it? 
there's definitely some good information around uh, around wind turbines. So 99% of the land wind farms are on can still be used for farming or natural habitat. People who live near wind farms are the most likely to support them. You can easily have a conversation standing under a modern turbine without raising your voice. And this is the really cool bit. Wind power in the UK is cheaper than gas. Building a wind farm costs less than any other power station. And the energy source is provided to us free of charge. Thank you very much, Mother Nature. So this section is about solar panels. What I thought was really cool is some examples of DIY solar water heater. So this one here, um, this one is an old radiator painted black inside an insulated box with a glass cover. How cool is that? Bit of research and YouTube homework. Connecting it to the pipes. It's totally doable. So in this section, We've got information about using the water that's all around us. Luckily, as an island, an archipelago, we have plenty of water. Information about tidal power, hydro, some more interactive exhibits. If you're a geek and a nerd like we are. Well, so this bit's pretty cool. This is more about solar water heating. It's explaining that by when you paint it dark, that's kind of the temperature, so it's 25 degrees C. Then if you add some insulation, we're at 28 degrees C. Cover it with glass, we're at 35 degrees C. A good example of harnessing the sun for your hot water, for your shower. Here we've got a bit about African wind power. Oh, wow. How are you doing that? Spraying the water into the pond. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Very cool. Well, I'm, I'm stood here, aren't I? How can I? Can't really see you. I don't want to drop it in the water, if I'm honest. <laughs> like right. Sort of so you're stopping the water coming out. And when you hold it up, it stops water when you push it down. It right. Makes water come. Oh, cool. And you can wait. Oh yeah, it's That's like a pump. Working. It's a pump. It's a pump. Very cool. It probably tells us on this board. So we're looking at hydraulic ram pumps, and the African wind power AWP36. God, this is full geek mode, isn't it? This turbine was made in Zimbabwe. It has a one kilowatt output. It's been specially designed for places with low wind speeds, such as inland Africa. So this bit of cat is called the whole home. Just gone through the whole garden. Let's see what this is all about. Energy efficient new buildings. So it uses heat from the sun, 90% less energy to heat than average house, 20 times less air leakage than the average house, retains heat from occupants and appliances, super insulation, continuous insulation, triple glazed windows, and mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. So this is an example. This would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Beautiful conservatory. Look, look what you got up there. Growing. Is that what you just said? Grapes. Wow. That's, that's going pretty well. Hmm. Looking at energy efficient appliances, lighting, cooking, electrical appliances can get much more efficient. That's the good thing about spending lots of time in the motorhome is we are very conscious of everything we use. We've only got a finite amount of water. We've only got a finite amount of gas. We've got solar, so we're very conscious about that. 
Um, so what's this telling us? Additional lamps. It's one of them that's on the. Okay. And then four ceiling lights. A typical house has many electrical appliances. The ceiling lights aren't coming on. So it's telling us. Television. How many watts used? Why isn't the four ceiling lights coming on? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the bulb's gone. There you go. Large fan. Whereas we, oh, in the motorhome, we get away with one 100 watt solar panel and one 100 amp hour battery. And that at the moment does everything we need. And hopefully it's going to get a bit more efficient as well. We're going to get a new inverter installed. So the bathroom takes 60% of your water, which again, living in the motorhome, we are very, very, we limit water a lot. A bath uses about three times more water than a shower. And water efficient showers use less water, but get you just as wet. Awesome. All right, that's it for now. Actually, before we leave here, this is pretty scary. Um, the average person uses 50 litres of water each day just to flush the toilet. So I did, uh, I did some calculations a, a, a couple of years ago around, I think I calculated we could save 18,000 litres of sterilised water by flushing the toilet with rainwater. So when we had the house, we had a, a, a five litre bucket and that's what I'd use to flush the toilet. Um, it just seems crazy that we get uh, sterilised water pumped to our houses and that same water that is drinkable um, is also used to flush the toilet and to wash up and have a shower. It's mad. So um, if you can, if you've got the space, try and collect rainwater from the gutter. You would be stunned at how much water you can capture from the gutter. Um, you can get a uh, water barrel probably for free off uh, Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree. And then um, just try and get hold of a secondhand uh, five litre bucket um, and use that to flush the toilet. It's an amazing way to feel empowered that we can consume a lot less and feel good about ourselves and save money. So we've just come next door. And this is an area all about different heating methods, biomass heating. This is definitely the place to do the research. If you've got a home and you're able to, or you're building a home, and you're able to do something different than gas central heating, loads of options. Smells great in here. Lovely smell of wood. So this is the last thing. Last part of the video is the water balanced funicular. This is definitely the way to enter and exit a, uh, a museum type educational place, which it's definitely got, if anybody's seen Children of Men film, a bit apocalyptic where you're trying to sort of hide out from society and the madness of what's going on in the world. Yeah, love this. One of the most interesting entrances. Obviously we are exiting at the moment, but um, yeah, it's a good day out. Surrounded by what must be something like Welsh rainforest and a pretty interesting day.